Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. And today, we're going to turn this little natural edge vase from a butternut branch. But please remember, this is not an instructional video, and it is for entertainment purposes only. And your safety is your responsibility. Let's get started. We're just starting out with our branch section between centers. I'm being very careful to leave the bark where I want it for the rim. And on the other side, I'm forming a tenon so we can hold it in the chuck. We've got the piece held firmly in the chuck with a bit of tailstock support. We're going to use a nice sharp spindle gouge for the initial shaping of the outside. We're going to start the lathe up at about, about 1800 RPM. That's enough shaping for now. I want to leave enough mass back here so that while hollowing, we don't get too much vibration. I noticed I have a soft little punky spot in the bark here. So before we go on to hollowing, I'm just going to stabilize it with a little bit of super thin CA glue. And it should harden it up real good. I'm just going to have to let it sit for about a minute or two to let it soak right in. Well. Looks like it won't take long to cure. To hollow this piece, I'm just gonna begin with the spindle gouge. Tool rest is set to on center. Lathe is still set to 1800 RPM. We're just gonna use the tool by, by feeding it in like a drill bit. Then closing the flute off while rotating the handle away from me. We wanna keep this bevel this bevel contact happening. So dead center, in like a drill bit a little bit, close the flute, tool handle goes away from you. See how smooth that cuts? In, close, away. I prefer a spindle gouge for a majority of my end grain hollowing. Using bevel support, I find I can take very heavy cuts and remove excess stock very quickly. It may not be the best tool for refining the shape, but it'll get you to that point quite efficiently. I've just switched over to a round nose scraper to clean up the very bottom, but I've raised the tool rest to now above center since we're cutting on the inside. A little bit of vibration, I'm getting a little bit of vibration, I'm going to turn the tool a little bit on its side. Never this way, just slightly this way. Sheer scraping. Still getting some vibration, I'm going to try to turn the lathe speed down and see if I can beat those harmonics. That's helped quite a bit. Had a little bit of chatter from the vibration in the bottom, but no torn grain, so I'm satisfied with that. Let's finish the outside. I'm just going to continue using the spindle gouge to shape the outside. Speed is still at 1800. I didn't bother bringing up the tailstock because the piece is short and chunky enough that it doesn't really need the support at this point.
I left myself enough mass down here that I'm going to be able to refine this shape and get this curve a little bit smoother. That's a little better. Now I'm just going to make a nice little foot for it. We're all ready to start sanding. To sand this piece, I'm going to use 220, 320, and 400 grit sandpaper. Much like with a goblet or a lidded box, I'm using long narrow strips of sandpaper to sand the inside of this vase. But always be careful sanding the inside of an enclosed spinning object. If it's too narrow, don't do it by hand. Take a piece of foam and glue it to a board or a broom handle or even a stick and then glue your sandpaper to that foam and then use that to sand the inside. The finish we're going to use on this piece is just a shellac friction polish. If you'd like the recipe and instructions for this friction polish, Please check the description down below. To part this vase off the lathe, I'm going to use my parting tool followed up with my skew chisel to leave a nice clean cut on the bottom. Lathe's running at about 1400 RPM. I'm going to part it off a little bit back from the bottom so I don't end up pulling any fibers out. Well, we're all done our little vase. After I finished sanding the bottom, I just went ahead and signed my name put what type of tree the wood came from and what year it is currently. Then I just hand rub some finish on the bottom. And I'll include some pictures at the end of the video like usual. But if you like the video, please click the like button and share it around. And if you have any questions or suggestions for me, please fire those off in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'll have a new video out every Friday. So thank you very much and have yourself a great day.